Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, I just did that variation video of all the different and Nova versions So I thought I'd just go over and I brought it up in the video That I want to go over an issue that people seem to be having where they're chopping paint um, With the N1 or the N3 uh, I'll go over the N3 first. It's a lot simpler. It, it, it's more complex in its operation um, and uh, then the M1. So there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of. It's just how it works and just pay attention to it and you should be fine on days on the field. But why am I holding one of my workhorses here? The ShockTech DM5. I always love the DMs. This is one of my workhorses. It's either this or the shock tech dm4 uh my silver one those are the ones that you normally if i if i need to sling paint those are the ones i normally take out on the field um and they shoot great you know they require maintenance just like everything else and you know i guess that's what it is somebody who's a old school shooter like me we're kind of used to doing maintenance on our stuff and you know what you should learn how to maintain your stuff anyway so why i brought this up right there's an adjustment on these that pertains to the N3s. That's the dwell. You don't have that with the N1. You don't have to worry about it. The timing valve, right? So on, on these guys, on all the other spoolies, you have dwell to deal with. So that's one of the things I do want to go over. So I'm going to put this guy down. Um, I know you're feeling a little neglect, right? Because you haven't been out. I've been playing with the Novas more, but you'll get out um this season i usually cycle all of them through the season at some point so let's go over this right n3 single trigger um and like i said this has a dwell on the timing valve so let's do a quick spot check let's say you have an issues right it, it's three things really that that would be giving you issues one is that you didn't properly lube your barrel um, before that day of play so normally what you want to do is lube this area right here you know doesn't take a lot lube that because if you can imagine this is going back and forth that is your point of friction right there so make sure you lube it another issue that people that contributes to chop is the improper insertion of the insert so the insert has two sides. One side is actually not perfectly round. It's a little oblong. You can't tell by looking at it, but it is. And the reason for that is so that when it goes in and oh, the the way you put it in is the markings. Uh, why is this not zooming in right here? Okay, anyway, the markings on here should be pointing outside should be outside. You should be able to read it when it's outside. So you insert the opposite end in, and there is some friction, as you can tell, right? And that basically prevents it from sliding in and out when the gun is cycling. If you do it the other way around, I'll show you. Goes in too easy, see? Very easy. So. There's a tendency if you do it the wrong way that as you're cycling, especially when you're rapid firing, that this is this slips out on occasion. And then that would cause a chop, obviously, because it's not in all the way. So just make sure you put this the right way. Opposite end, you should see some friction at the end of it. You should see the markings on here, okay? So that's one. So let's put this on because next step a spot check troubleshooting. You're gonna need we're gonna need the barrel on. So first things first, right? If you're having some chops, let's check the pressure. You're gonna need this. Okay, you shouldn't have to use this all the time, but you know, you're gonna need this this um pressure gauge that came with the N3s. So luckily for the most part, I haven't had tools, yeah. So this just pops out. 
Okay. Boom. That's one piece right there. There's a spring. Just pay attention to the order. Um, this is a little trickier, so let me get a plier. Two thousand years later. All right, sorry about that. I want to get some pliers. It's a little easier, you know, not necessarily that you got to put a lot of pressure here, but I just, you know, just open it up and add some friction to the inside of this and um, should be able to get it out. So that's the other piece. Like I said, pay attention to the order. And on the newer ones, on the Novas that got sent out, on the N3s that got sent out after mid-December, they came with this, right? This little ring. This actually made the gun a little bit more efficient um, and run a little better, and it just slips on here. The original one, my the red one that I had, because that was kind of like one of the early versions, did not have this. This came after. If you're missing this, let TJ know. Uh, reach out to Novo PB, and they'll send you one. Free upgrade. Why not? Right? Supposedly, like you get an extra cubic inch of savings per shot. Whatever. It works. If it works, it works. Perfect. Um, I have no scientific way of measuring that, so I'm going to take the word for it, and it's free anyway, so just do it. So, take this. Once you get those components out, take this, pop it in. Okay. Pop it in. Get some air. Um, you're gonna need some air. Put it on. Well, it's sealed. So, what you wanna look for, take safety off. If you press the trigger, You should, you should look to see if this is at around uh, 160 PSI. I don't know if I can, you can see that. Oops. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Maybe 160 PSI. Cause that's normally when it comes from the factory and when they test the marker, it's at around 160. Mine is about 160. So if you're in that pressure range, you should be good to go as far as the timing of the, uh, of the timing valve goes. You're in the range where it's optimal condition, where it should shoot as fast as you can pull the trigger. Um, if you are not in that range, then that means you gotta increase your pressure. You increase it. There's two adjustments. There's the, I call it the micro and macro or big screw, little screw. The big screw gives you bigger jumps. Most of the time you shouldn't have to touch that. For fine tuning the pressure, you just have to use the inner, inner screw. And there are two different Allen keys. So uh, I believe this is the, the inner one is a 332, so let me just, yep. 332, right? 332 screw, uh, Allen key. That's the one you're gonna use to increase or decrease your pressure if you are not at 160. So what ended up happening, I think, for a lot of folks is that when they're changing their um, velocity sometimes, you end up like, turning the wrong screw and then the pressure just gets way too low. If it's too low, you're gonna have chop issues. So spot check it, get it to around 160 and you should be good to go. So after that, um, 
There you go, it released. Should just be able to take this out. Right, unscrew it, put this back in. I usually tilt it down, just make it easier. Press that in. Put the spring. And these have a little guide to it, so you just kind of press this in. And you should be good to go. Sear it up, make sure. Oh, there it is. Actually, I just realized I can't rip as fast on this the the single trigger as compared to the the double trigger one. The double trigger one you saw in my last video. I can definitely. Rip it. I just gotta get used to it. I think I'm not used to it on the on the N3, um, but I'll take it out on the field once I get to the field again. I'll take it out and um, test that out. Anyway, another tip, okay? And this is just a theory that I've been working on now that I've been playing. This applies to uh, the N1 as well. I, I think for the, more so I noticed it on the N1 and this is why it's a working theory. So a lot of the chops, if you do get a chop, it's usually in the barrel or you would notice that there's somehow the paintball got clipped um, and that's why you got a chop right so my working theory is this remember this is a you know moving barrel there's really no detents no nothing here so this is my working theory best experience I ever have usually when I play with the N1 especially before when, when I'm not using, when I didn't have the tear air, was I always had better time with the Revy. And my working theory is that is, and, and then, you know, I would switch to the control, right? I have the control here or the spire, right? But I would have issues with these guys. I'd get, you know, misfeeds, chops, uh, once in a while, not all the time, once in a while. But I think my theory is this, right? On the Revis, okay, oh, I wish I had something to put this in. Um, so my theory is this. On these motorized agitated hoppers, right? Actually, hold on. let me see if I can demonstrate this a little better. So my theory is this, that these agitated non-true force-fed or semi-force-fed loaders don't put a, a, a pressure on the stack. So what I mean by that is, let's say part of the paintball is sticking out, right? I don't know if you can see that well, but let's say part of the paintball is sticking out. When the barrel goes back to load, you see how it pushes it back up? So it get, there's room for it to move back up and get it get out of the way, minimizing the clipping of the next paintball. That's my theory. And because, I think that because, let's see, let me put this in here, right? Yeah, let me just pour it. I'm gonna grab that. So my theory is this, right? And I think that, like I said, is because on the, let's say on the spire, Right? Shoot. I know it's not true force fed, like they say, like the rotor, 
but there's not as much movement to get out of the way. Uh, trying to not get this like spilling. There's a lot more resistance. Like it doesn't get out of the way as freely as with a Revy. So I think that's, uh, that, that's why I have a better, more consistent gameplay with an agitated hopper like the Revy than I do with, like I said, the spiral to control or even the rotor. The rotor keeps up, especially with the N3 double trigger, but I, I, I know occasionally I have that issue because of, because of what I just said. So that's my theory, right? So if you want a good day of play, if you're having a lot of chops, switch out to like a Revy or something that's not forcing it down the breech and try it. It might work. So this is, um, I haven't tried it with this one yet. Uh, I've been taking different loaders out to the field. Next time I go, I'm gonna take this HK Sonic. Well, the Sonic, you know, it's basically a, it has this agitated loader kind of like, but faster, kind of like the Revy. So, I'm hoping my, my theory, my theory holds through, true. And, um, and this works because I'm testing it out, right? Just same way, let's say my Revy theory, my agitated loader theory. See how it gets out of the way? Cause just like the Revy, it's not putting a force on the stack. There's no force on the stack with, with this one. So that's my theory, but it feeds, this feeds supposedly faster than the Revy, obviously. Um, and, you know, that's pretty good. And I think it'll, it'll be fine, so. Next time I'm there, oh yeah, I forgot. The, the cone on this is in the front. Everything else is in the back. That's why I kept tilting it backwards. But anyway, that's my working theory. So I think for a good day, enjoyable play, don't have anything that forces the uh, the loader, the for, the, uh, lo don't use a loader that forces it and shoves it down the breech and doesn't have give for the paintball to go back up if it needs to. So, you know, I'm gonna try this out next time. Um, this is actually pretty light compared to this. Um, so that's my theory. So hopefully you got what I said um, earlier. So just to recap, check your pressure. Make sure it's at least 160, right? Um, if it's lower than that, then you gotta turn it up. You're gonna have problems. Make sure you lube the barrel and and the inserts. Make sure you put it in the right way. And then also try it out with a agitated loader like the Revy. Or uh, somebody just tried the Ricochet lately and they said that it worked flawlessly, no issues. Um, and I think someone tried a Pinocchio too, no issues, you know, or very minimal. So I think my theory might hold true. Um, so anyway, so let me rip on this a little bit. Oh, turn it off. Let's see. Pretty good. So I can't wait to try this out on the field next time we go around. But you heard that. Um, the sound signature on that, right? Let me switch to the N1, which I've been saying is probably still, at the moment, my favorite Nova, especially with the Tear Air, which this one has. I, I mean, I can't wait to shoot the ones that are coming up next, and there's a couple of exciting ones. Um, and see how those are but right now it's like for like pure joy just going out and having fun this is the way to go and uh this is the one that has the tear air on it i 
actually we can you should also one more thing you should watch when you're ripping on it especially on the double trigger and threes when you're ripping on it watch what the bolt is doing if you see if you know you're pressing the trigger fully but you see it only halfway going down it, it's usually the the timing valve is too low uh you don't have enough turns in it remember it's seven turns um, from the factory or you don't have enough pressure and also that your insert might be in backwards so you know it's a good quick test anyway that's all i got hopefully uh i know it was long but i was trying to be as thorough as i can um and hopefully that helps you out all right see ya